Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use integration by parts twice. Uh, so sometimes when you're trying to integrate something using integration by parts, you actually have to apply it twice to the same problem to get your answer. So this is going to be an example of that. We're going to integrate e to the x times cosine x dx. And this is a, kind of the next portion of my series where I'm showing you how to use all the formulas on my calculus 2 study guide. Um, I've already done some videos on my channel about integration by parts, so I wanted to show you this example where you have to do it twice in the same problem. If you haven't already checked it out, there's a link down in the description where you can learn more about my Calc 2 study guide, but I definitely recommend going and checking that out. It's available for download instantly, so you can start using that today. Um, but there's a link down there, so go click that and come back and watch the rest of this video. But let's go ahead and jump into this one. So obviously we're going to be applying integration by parts in this problem. So let's just start with what that formula looks like from my study guide. So the integration by parts formula basically just has, says if we have the integral of u times dv, we can rewrite that as u times v minus the integral of v du. So basically the idea here is that we're trying to rearrange our integral in a way that gives us you know a different integral we still have to integrate but hopefully this integral is meant to be easier than the one we started with so when you're applying integration by parts the first thing you would need to do is look at your function that you're integrating so in this case e to the x times cosine x and you need to designate which piece of this you're going to consider your u and which piece you're going to consider dv so basically the idea is you want to pick your u to be something that's easier to take the derivative of and your dv to be something that's easier to take the integral of because we're going to have to take the derivative of u the integral of dv and we're going to have to reuse those pieces in our our formula here so this example that we have here there isn't really going to be a clear choice for our u and our dv because what i mean by that is let's think about each of these pieces here so obviously our two pieces are just going to be e to the x and cosine of x one of those we're going to have to call u and take the derivative of one of them we're going to have to call dv and take the antiderivative of. But let's think about those different scenarios for a second. So if we look at e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Well, also the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So this piece here, the e to the x, is not really going to give us any sort of indication of whether we would rather take the derivative or the antiderivative of it because we're going to get the same thing either way so that's not going to really make our life easier or harder whichever way we put that and then also the cosine x the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x and the antiderivative of cosine x is positive sine x so again it's not really different obviously one is positive sine one is negative sine but either way, we're just going to have a constant, negative 1, or positive 1, times sine of x. So again, that's not really going to be any more or less complicated, depending on whether we take the derivative or the antiderivative of cosine x. So really, there's no right designation in this case. Whether we take the derivative of e to the x and the antiderivative of cosine x, or vice versa, applying this integration by parts formula isn't going to be any better or worse either way. So it really doesn't matter what we do. We just want to call one of them u and one of them dv. So let's just call our e to the x u and our cosine x dv. Okay, so that's the first step of these problems. We got our u, we got our dv. Now we need to figure out du and v. So du is always just going to be the derivative of whatever piece we called u. So since our u is e to the x, our du is also going to be e to the x and then a dx in there and then since our dv is cosine x our v is just going to be the antiderivative of cosine x the antiderivative of cosine x is sine x so now we got all our pieces figured out we got our u our dv our du and our v so now we can just take these four pieces and plug it into this formula over here which basically says we can rewrite our original integral as u times v minus the integral of v times du. So u times v is going to give us e to the x times sine x. And then we have minus the integral of v times du. Well, v times du is going to be sine x times e to the x dx. So that's going to give us minus the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx so now we have this other different integral 
But the weird thing about this other integral we have is it's not really any better than the integral we started with. It's just e to the x times sine of x instead of cosine x, which isn't any easier to integrate. So it seems like we're not really getting anywhere. But what you want to think about with these kind of, you know, especially when we have exponential or trig functions doing this integration by parts thing, is taking the derivative or the antiderivative of cosine and sine over and over, it kind of cycles, right? It's going to go back and forth between positive and negative sine and cosine. So what we want to think about is if we now can evaluate this integral, we want to make the same kind of designations we did up here, right? So we can use integration by parts again down here. We're going to call our e to the x u, and we're going to call sine x dx dv. And if we then go through this integration by parts again, something kind of interesting is going to happen. So again, first of all, we, we designated our u and our dv. Now we need to figure out what our du and our v are in this case. So our du is just the derivative of u. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. v is just the antiderivative of whatever we call dv. The antiderivative of sine x is going to be negative cosine x dx. So now to find this integral, we can again plug these four pieces that we have here into this integration by parts formula. So we can rewrite this as u times v minus the integral of v du, which just this little integral here would be rewritten as u times v, so e to the x times negative cosine x. I'm sorry, the dx should be up there with the du, not with the v. So it's going to be u times v is e to the x times negative cosine x. So negative e to the x cosine x minus the integral of v du. So minus the integral of negative cosine x times e to the x dx. So minus the integral of negative e to the x cosine x dx. So keep in mind that this whole thing that we just wrote here is the integration by parts formula applied to just this integral. But remember, we had all this other stuff too. So we know that you know going from this step here down to this step here, we need to carry this e to the x sine x down. And then we have minus this whole thing that's in brackets here because this whole thing that's in brackets is what was equivalent to this integral here. So now let's just kind of simplify this a bit. So what I mean by simplify, we have this negative sign in the integral and outside of the integral. You know, we could pull that out and those are just going to cancel. We want to distribute this negative to each of these pieces here. So actually distributing this negative is just going to make that positive and that positive. So we're just going to get e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x plus or minus, I should say, because we can pull this negative sign out of the integral there, minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Okay, so again, it seems like we haven't really gotten anywhere because now we have this integral of e to the x cosine x dx, which is exactly what we started with. We were trying to find the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. So it doesn't seem like we've gotten anywhere easier because we still have the same messy integral we started with. But what you want to think about is we know that this whole thing is equal to this integral we started with, right? We've used integration by parts to simplify it to this other integral and then to convert it to this other integral and then simplifying. So basically at this point, we know just kind of comparing what we started with to where we are now, we know the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to this whole step that we're at here. So equal to e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Remember, this integral of e to the x cosine x dx is what we're trying to find. So if we can get this equals a bunch of stuff without another integral over here, we've solved our problem. 
So to do that, basically what you want to do is think that this whole integral, this big old thing right here, is what we're trying to solve for. So what we could essentially do is treat that whole integral as like its own variable and isolate it on one side of our equation. So we can actually just add this integral of e to the x cosine x dx to both sides of our equation to move it over to the left side. So that'll cancel over here, right? And then we'll get plus e to the x cosine x, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx over here. Now we just have two of the same thing. So this can be simplified to two times the integral of e to the x cosine x dx, right? And then we know that's equal to e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. And then we can divide the two over telling us that this integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x all over two. And if you wanted to, you could factor out your e to the x from the numerator, but you know, this is perfectly fine. So, you know, we've basically just kind of treated this as its own variable and isolated it to solve for it. So now we know that that integral equals that, that fraction right there. So like I said, integration by parts is one of the topics covered on my Calc 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description so you can go grab that for yourself right now. So just go click that. That'll take you over. You can, you can grab that right away and start using it today and should make your life a lot easier. Thanks and see you next time.